Hello, Freedom Fighters. If you haven't seen enough of the Angry Albertan today, well, here's another one coming at you live from downtown Leduc. And I'd have to say, <clears throat> Leduc's doing something right. Look at this. This just looks a thousand times better than White Avenue. Welcome to downtown Leduc. You're with the Angry Albertan here. We are down here to bring you the story of how these business owners have been singled out and attacked by Alberta Health Services. So we are outside the Leduc coffee shop here, which is uh, now, let's uh, give you the address. Oh, we don't have an address sign around here, but we're downtown Leduc. This uh, nice couple owns the Leduc coffee shop and they also own Playing for Keeps Toys. So we'll give you a little tour of their premises here. The, uh, the Leduc coffee shop has been singled out by Alberta Health Services and shut down because their employees are mask exempt. Um, and this is the story we're gonna try and get across to you folks tonight. So let's head on inside. I'm gonna show you the gift store first. The gift store is still open. And let me tell you, this is a beautiful gift store. This gift store has a little bit of something for everybody. So we got handmade stuff, you know, we got soaps, we got, you want a coffee mug that looks like a curling rock? You can get one of those. You can get your beer soap. Who doesn't need beer soap? Everybody needs more beer in their life. They even sell shaving soap. I actually use shaving soap, I love it. If you haven't tried whipping up a lather, in a nice shaving mug with some real shaving soap, you are missing out. What a beautiful little gift shop. And then if we go to the back here, tons of cool, high quality toys for the kids. I mean, costumes that, you know, look like they're handmade, you know. I know Halloween is over, but my kids would wear that any day of the week. They, uh, you can get classic toys like these Russian nesting dolls. <clears throat> So if you're doing a little Christmas shopping, please come down and support this business in Leduc. They're having a real tough go of it with the health inspector shutting down half of their business. So yeah, any, any you know, they got all sorts of, they got giant dump trucks and, you know. So if you have any gift shopping to do, don't do it on Amazon, come down. Come down and support Karen here. So this is the coffee shop that they have shut down. This is, uh, this is the proprietor, Karen. Hi, Karen, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Excellent. Good. I see we've got, the, we've got the tape on the floor. Yes, extra large X's. Extra large as, X's. As requested. As requested. Let, we'll just, just in case anybody can see them. We'll just give the people a little tour. As you can see, this place is really spacious. You'd have to try hard to not social distance in this space. This business has been visited three times by the health inspectors, um, while other local businesses like McDonald's and Tim Hortons have yet to receive an inspection during the entire duration of this COVID-19 pandemic, in quotation marks. So you've been visited three times by the health inspector. Why don't you tell us what's been going on? So on um, June 24th, we had a visit from the health inspector and he was concerned that our floor markings were not uh, prominent enough and that the, uh, there was some distancing happening at our, our, our service counter. So we said to him, well, we put these tables to create a, enough of a space between us and the customer, and we've got markings on the floor. I said, I, I don't see where, where we're not being compliant with any of the uh, guidance. And he, he insisted that no, they needed to be bigger, and I, I took up the guidance and I, I underlined the words to him where it said, to, you know, to your best of your abilities, to the greatest extent possible, and you, you shall, or um, you, you, sh uh, you should do mask wearing, but nothing ever said mandatory anything. So, and at that time, we didn't tell a bylaw. So, um, that was it, June 24th, then he went away. So that was the last we heard from him until October 20th, he showed up again. And he said, uh, he actually stood here, there was two bylaw officers and two AHS officials. And they were um, explaining to me why I need to wear a mask because the Duke had implemented the mask bylaw. And I explained to them that I have an exemption. And they wouldn't accept that as, as uh, legitimate. And I said, well, it's right in your bylaw and I have an exemption. So the bylaw people finally, um, after multiple times telling me they were gonna come back, find me over and over and over again, they finally left. 
with the AHS officials. Then the next day, the Wednesday following, the 21st, I had a visit um, from AHS uh, Valdeb uh, Santos and his manager, Chris. And they want to speak to me because they want to come to resolution. So I explained to them that I had an exemption. It's my family. We work in this back area here. We have space that we're, we're distanced from our customers. We have a pickup counter. People just come pick up their food. And Chris, the manager, was, was very reasonable, I thought, said, I have no problem with you guys not masking back here. This is where you're working. And so we seemed to be coming, I thought, to some, some agreement. So then they left. And then Valdev showed up again the following week. So Tuesday, a week to the day from that first inspection with the, the two officers and two HS officials. And he walked in here with, um, I, I believe, just intent to um, not to inspect, but to get what he would call evidence. He asked me to come and speak with him. And I said, I can't come and speak to you. I don't have a mask on. I'm in my work area here. Well, just come on out. I need to speak with you. I need to speak with you. Just come out. I need to speak with you. I said, I can't come and speak to you. What do you need to say to me? Explain what you need. Just come and, and say what you need. Everything has been public to this point. Why do I need to speak in private with you? Just say what you need. He said, well, I'm going to go measure the tables over there. So he went and he, he measured the tables. And then he came back and he said to me, he said, I think the tables are too close. Some of the tables are too close. Do you want to go and fix them? And I said, I told you. I have a mask on. I cannot go and fix them. I guess we'll do it later. So then he said to me, and the markings on your floor, they're not... They're not big enough. They're not prominent. So I said, well, what do you want? Color tape? Yes, color tape. So I got some colored masking tape and I made some X's. And, I, and he goes, no, 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 not big. Bigger, bigger, he said. I said, OK, bigger like this. He goes, yes. So I stretched out pieces of tape and I put them on the edge of the counter. And then he pulled out a book and he said to me, you've got the tables that are too close together. Do you want to go and fix that now? Or should I write it in my report that it's not, not been done? Do you want me to put it in the report? The X's on the floor are not done. They're not big enough. Do I put that in the report? Do you want me to put that in the report? So at this point, my daughter and my husband went around, moved the tables. I came out and I put the X's on the floor. And he turned around and he said to me, I have everything I need now. And he left. The next day, we were issued a close order uh, based on his findings. And one of the findings you'll see in the order is uh, Employees of the facility are observed performing various tasks without wearing masks in the dining area. So this is this was what he came to get. His his uh, way to file his uh, close order was that he he needed some proof, some evidence. But it was evidence that he basically set us up for. It was entrapment. This is what basically, it was. Basically, and you know, I, I think the the sad thing in all of this is we've been operating this restaurant under these restrictive conditions. You know, since it was just after Pi Day, I remember it was a great Pi Day here on May 14th. And, um, you know, we've been uh, remaking ourselves, remaking ourselves, remaking ourselves every time there's more restrictions placed upon us. And I, it's, it's been my family, and, I'm, and we're working hard, we're doing the right things. We have had literally no issues. We don't have any COVID cases related to us. We have nothing. And I don't understand what it is that people um, can't just seem to wrap their heads around. There, we have mass file on the Duke now because they, they said once it was 10 active cases, so 10 positive tests. Not necessarily anybody needing hospitalization or anything, but 10 positive tests, they were going to enact mass bylaw. Um, we got our, our Dina uh, Hinshaw, our chief medical officer, saying basically we're stopping asymptomatic testing. Healthy people just don't give COVID. So uh, healthy people wearing masks when there's an exemption in place for a mass bylaw in a city of about 30,000 people where there is just slightly over 10 cases. There is something more going on here. And, and I think for the people that say we're not, we don't care and we're not being safe, there is nothing further from the truth. Would I put my family at risk? It's my family that we work together here. I would never do that to anybody. We, we, we absolutely love our customers. We have customers that come, they choose to wear masks, they come to get the food to go, some choose to stay. You know, we just really, really believe that we have to have freedom win out over fear. And we are very compliant with anything and all of the rules and guidances and laws that have all been put forth to us. So it's unfortunate that it's come to this, but um, you know we've, we've got some uh, actions that we're going to keep working on. And uh, hopefully, I had to submit a plan uh, to reopen the restaurant. And as you can see, one of the things we did is we hung 
these um, shower curtains <laughs> all the way around, around our workspace so that we can safely keep uh, people away from us. And uh, I haven't been inspected yet to see if that's going to meet approval of AHS. And I had to submit a plan. So I did that. They came to us on Wednesday at 11.30. I submitted the plan uh, Thursday morning. And I was assured that there would be a quick turnaround. I would hear something soon. Uh, I waited all day Thursday. I didn't hear anything. Friday at noon, I uh, phoned Chris. And I said, just kind of wondering what's going on. Like, is this going to be... You know, what, what's the definition of, of a quick turnaround? Is it hours, is it days, is it weeks, is it months? Like, how long should I expect to wait? I didn't hear anything again. I thought I would call again at 3 o'clock on Friday before he was home for the weekend. Uh, I didn't hear anything back. But at 6.30, I did receive an email back from Valdev uh, saying that, yes, he read the plan and there were some uh, amendments that need to be made to it. So I clicked on the, uh, the document to see what the amendments were, and they just needed to have the uh, name, address, and date put on it. So I'm hoping that we have uh, appeased AHS. Um, we hope to be open Monday, so Tuesday at the latest. We're hoping, but we don't know for sure. Because they haven't said a word. So basically, you've been visited three times, and they're essentially just trying to, it's because you, you're, you and your staff, it's essentially your family working over yes. there. Yeah. They're exempt from mask wearing. So they stay, oh, let me turn that camera around for you. This is their work area. They are behind a cooler, they're behind a counter. They've put these tables here so that you will be six feet away. You'll never be within six feet of the employees. And they've been singled out by Alberta Health Services because they are not wearing a mask behind the counter. So on his third visit here, he basically essentially forced them to come out from behind the counter so that he could write them up for not social distancing. And he stood, where was he standing when? So he was uh, standing here. He stands here and I stand over here by that. So we couldn't even So when you come out of here, you have no option but to be within six feet of him. Yeah, yeah. So. He stands here, I'm standing over there. And, he's and you knew exactly what he was up to. And so you kept it cool and you said, no, I'm not coming out there. You're going to write me up for social distancing. But he was so persistent that he upset your husband and your daughter and they just said, fine, we'll fix it. Now, what table was he complaining about was because, I mean, look at this, folks. Way back, way back here, we had, uh, so we had a single table here and we had another table. We had a table sitting here and we had tables here. So these two tables he felt were close. So when he would pull out the chairs like this and measure, he said they weren't far enough apart. And again, the suggestion is that between your dining parties, you need to have so many, I, I, I guess it's meters, not feet, we should be saying. Two meters, right. Two meters, right, not, not, not six feet. So, um, you know, one would argue that you, know, you measured from here to, to here, it was you know, two meters, but that's not really good enough. What they were wanting is, you know, this chair is here, you know, this chair is here, that's the primary reason. They want to ensure that we've got two meters between. And so we, we're, we were talking, he was essentially fussing over a couple of inches. And so your husband came out here with your daughter, they moved the table, and of course, now they've been written up for violating the social distancing guidelines. And that was all the justification that this guy needed to do, immediately shut down your business. Yeah. You, f you filled out the paperwork that they asked of you and they ignore it for several days. And Friday, they say, uh, you need to complete this form. And all you needed to do, if I remember correctly, was put your name and address on the form and send it back and date. So a trivial little detail like that. Now your opening is, or your reopening is delayed for another weekend. Who knows when you're gonna get the notice on Monday, if it even comes, yeah. you know. Um, I'm guessing you had to throw out everything in your fridge, basically, not knowing yeah. when you're going to reopen. Yeah, yeah. And how many times have you had to throw out everything in that fridge now? Well, I, I'll tell you, when they first shut us down, everything went into the garbage. And then as we slowly, slowly tried to figure out how are we going to operate, I mean, we just didn't know. I mean, people, people would come, people wouldn't come, so you're trying to prepare food. And we just basically started limiting our menu to one or two items because everything was just being made and thrown in the garbage, being made and thrown in the garbage. So it's, it's been, you know, hard to sort of, again, remake ourselves and figure out what we need to do. Um, it's been really good lately. Like, it's, it's been good. We've had no concerns. You know, again, he was here June 24th. 
left, we heard nothing from him, we've changed nothing since June 24th. You know, I, I, I find it a little bit um, odd, I guess, or whatever, that there has been even commentary from, from on, on CTV and in, in the documentation where he said, well, hand sanitizer is not available. You know, hand sanitizer was available, is available on the, behind the counter where the customers are, but it wasn't available at the door, so 10 feet away, and he cites that as being such a, a grievous oversight. And so I, I think people, people need to understand that these, you know, what they're, what they're closing us down for were not gross, you know, violations or anything. These were very, very subtle and, and very much set up. So none of those things put anybody at risk. And, none of, and, and if they were things that were so egregious, like there's nothing has changed since June to October. Um, where's it been for, for, for those multiple months where everybody was so at risk mm -hmm. that it justified closing your business down? Mm -hmm. Where was he? Where was he for all those months? Was he being negligent in his job, or did he just not have the incentive to come and tell me? Because the first two things that he cites on his order are actually not an offence under HS's guidelines. The guidelines say should, and as every lawyer out there knows, particularly the lawyers that write these documents for AHS, should is not a mandatory word. They can actually use shall or must, and they always do when it is a shall or must. Um, so what actually changed? Because nothing as far as I'm aware has changed. No businesses have had to put up, you know, move things around. And as one of the things that everybody watching needs to Think about go into your local Tim Hortons, your local McDonald's, your local Canadian Tire, and see how close the aisles are. See how close the tables are. I've never seen a place that is so spaced out. I've never seen a place since this started that has gone to the extremes that this location has gone to and been abused and targeted. And as a retired police officer, Josh is right that that was a settle. That was entrapment. That is actually an offense. This inspector needs not just to be hauled up over the coals. Somebody needs to be talking to him about the damages he's caused without any due cause. He's committed an offense. If, if, if there was any justice in the world, he'd be fired. He shouldn't be out there inspecting any properties. This is a disgrace. And guess what? Everybody out there who's got a small business, and even you McDonald's, and you Tim Hortons, you're next. If you think this ends here, this insanity, when people are going to extremes and, and are being shut down because the little crosses on the floor are not big enough. But how big are the crosses on the floor? Go to your local supermarket right now, having just cleaned all the floors, and see how many of them have even got any dots on the floor anymore. Most of them have gone. Um, have you seen that your health inspector go out and shut all those locations down? I haven't seen anybody else. And actually, I've been on AHS's website and looked to see who's been shut down for COVID um, violations. I see places shut down because they are very unsanitary and shouldn't, nobody should be going near them. But uh, this is a, the only location I see being targeted right now, and I use the word targeting. And as a police officer who who should enforce things like this, this this disgusts me. And the bylaw officers that came, obviously, there was such a, an urgent issue they issued you the tickets on the on the spots, didn't they? No, they didn't, because they didn't have any authority to, because there weren't any offences. Um, and also, how many people were in here? causing health violations and such a big risk that four people had to come down and then another two people the next day and then another person the next day. I didn't realize that you were such a health risk to the whole of society that they had to dedicate half of their inventory of people to come and shut you down. This is insane. As I say, people out there, go and have a look at other locations. Go to your local uh, place where you excuse me, where you, where you go to eat. Go to the big stores that are not being targeted. Go to Canadian Tire, that's had multiple citations. 
but haven't actually, nobody's gone. This place has never even been cited. This place has actually had multiple inspections that haven't been followed up and then suddenly got targeted. So CTV, you know, rather than just going onto the website or getting a tip from someone, how about before you actually put pen to paper and commit libel against people and actually say that somebody's doing something wrong? How about contacting the owner? Because you didn't bother doing that. You didn't bother asking anybody, was this true? And was it what's been written up? When did, when did journalism die? Oh, actually, years ago. But how about, how about the people of Alberta actually hold CTV to account? Ask them to come and send a reporter down here and find out what the real story is before you try to destroy businesses. Oh, they're trying to destroy lives. I mean, this is, yeah. this is your livelihood. And they just shut it down. And I mean, seriously, people, look at the amount of space in this building. Uh, so, Karen, how many, uh, how many COVID cases have been directly linked to your coffee shop? Zero. Zero cases. And I think across Alberta, I think it's, it's like 1% or less than 1% of all COVID cases. Remember, positive tests, what we're talking about, someone who tests positive even with uh, you know, no, symptoms. no symptoms or a, a, a minor symptom. Uh, so less than one percent and the restaurant industry is still being treated by the people say we're not in a lockdown when we are we are well, still in living in lockdown restrictions the west end home depot in edmonton has had covid cases the lows on the west side of edmonton has had covid cases they're all still open they've had covid positive employees and they weren't even shut down for an afternoon guess guess where most of in fact if not most of, almost every single COVID case in a care home in Alberta, guess where they are? Would you say residents? All those, those people that are in that place all the time? No, almost every single one of them has been an asymptomatic staff member in every single care home across the province. Um, but we've got problems. It's not in the restaurant industry. It's the trained professionals who are doing their best. We've got a problem with cases, or have we got a problem with testing, or have we got a problem with the protocols? Somebody needs to start asking AHS some questions rather than bending to their will. Because I still haven't seen any proof from Dina Hinshaw or anybody else that we've ever hit a point in this province that justifies the extreme measures they've taken to everybody's lives. Everybody wants to check how many cases we've had for COVID per 100,000 and how many we get for influenza. Oh, sorry, we don't have influenza anymore. For the first time in a few thousand years, it died and disappeared from the whole planet. Um, this is insane. I mean, we're, we're having, this is one tiny little store that has done everything done more than anyone else i've ever seen to try and bend to the ridiculous requirements of ahs and because somebody doesn't like the fact that somebody might be exempt which by definition is discrimination against the protected class i'm one of those people and i just won that against the library yesterday the library came out and admitted that to deny someone service based on their exemption is discriminatory and and they completely back down from it i'd like to take this opportunity to thank ctv um for their coverage biased as it was actually about this incredible family business karen robert and her lovely daughter chantal who had the pleasure of meeting because ctv you were and anna i should add anna too i should remember that's my daughter's name um I would really like to thank CTV, and the reason I'd like to thank them is because despite that biased, appalling report that negatively impacted Karen and her family and their business, the outpouring of support that I saw for Karen, we were today at the Legislature for an incredible rally with Laura Lynn, Tyler Thompson and her crew, and the outpouring of support there that I heard from people in attendance for this little business. Please, Albertans. If you want to come do your Christmas shopping, this is the place to come. I spent a fortune in here. My husband is very unhappy right now, but Karen's happy.
So if you're looking to come and do Christmas shopping, please come and visit Karen at her store in Le Duc um, Magpies. Um, wonderful place and a wonderful family. Yeah, why don't you take us into the gift shop? Oh, come on, take a look and see. So we have... Um, so let's just all take one look at this here. We have lots of puzzles and board games over here too. So as, as many people have discovered, puzzling is a great pastime. <laughs> yeah, we, there's, there's probably about a thousand choices there. And so just look at how far these folks have gone with the shower curtains, setting the tables in front of everything so that you have to be six feet away from them at all times. And let's see, let's see what the health inspector's done with the gift shop. So here, here is the cash station for the gift shop and uh, all of a sudden wow we're safe again we don't need tables you know we don't need so how is this now i'm even afraid to say this because if this health inspector hears me saying this how can this be safe and that over there was dangerous they uh, but okay let's tell us about this gift shop give us the name give us the address it's 4728 50th Ave, alberta main street so the same address as the coffee shop we own this building and have split it in half to have the coffee shop on one side and this gift store slash toy store on the other side um, we've had the business now for about five years heading into our sixth year our focus has always been trying to uh, source uh, you know, high quality, as local as we can be. So we have got stuff, we've got jewelry that's made by people just right here in the Duke and, uh, you know, throughout the province, and particularly across Canada. We have um, beautiful, uh, you know, beauty products, bath products made, you know, a lot of this is made in BC. This is made from a local lady. We've got La Duke Black Gold Soap and Alberta Wild Rose Soap. That's made by a local lady here. We've got this panel that's made by a lovely gentleman in Manitoba. We've got mugs from, from a lady in Edmonton. We have uh, dream catchers from a, a lovely native lady out in BC. We have um, wine glasses that we bought from a lady down in the home. We've got these, uh, these balls that are made um, in, in Ontario. We've got wooden bowls that's made, again, from a um, lovely family out in, in uh, Ontario as well. Uh, these are made locally in Edmonton. So we, we try very, very much in our gift shop to, to keep things as close to home as we possibly can. And uh, we've got stuff from Saskatchewan, we've got makers just everywhere. And our, our toys selection, primarily, uh, again, we try to source the best that we can. We use Canadian companies. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of Canadian you know, made toys, but we, we, we try to find, we've got, you know, a lovely dress-up toys that's made in, in Canada primarily. We have a lot of uh, stuff that's made in Europe, we have uh, from Belarus, and, and just all, all across across the world, but high quality and uh, open-ended play, because we just believe that kids need to think for themselves, not be told how to think. And uh, this creative play just lends itself so well to uh, great, great critical thinking skills and, and uh, not telling them how to play, just giving them the tools and letting them play however they best want to be. So, and great books and yeah, it's, we love the store, we love the we love Duke, we love our customers. People have been so good to us and, and we're, we're humbled by all of the appreciation and attention and focus that we receive from everybody. So, can't say thank you uh, enough. And uh, I, I just, we're, we're, we're really humbled, humbled by all of this. Thank you. Give us the name one more time and the address. Uh, it's the Duke Coffee Shop and Magpie's Collection, Gifts, Toys, and More. 4728 50th Avenue, Duke, Alberta. We are here Monday to Saturday, and we're closed on Sundays. We do have another location, a retail location at the Premium Outlet Mall. You can find us there at entrance number one, Magpie's Collection. Awesome. And like I say, I was so shocked. This is my favorite section right here is a guy who has to shave his head. <laughs> Real shaving soaps. So all you guys out there with your cans of Gillette, man, you haven't shaved until you've whipped up a lather <laughs> and uh, and done it the old fashioned way. I use shaving soap every day. It's totally awesome. And if you're like a trendy guy like me with a beard and, you know, you like to be groomed, you got to try the you know, and better yet, get a double-bladed uh, safety razor. And if you're really brave, try the straight razor. I've done that too. It's dangerous though. It's kind of a, it's more sporting. I'd like to recommend for anybody who has a child or adult who likes to eat things, um, excellent children's books. They are washable, as in through the machine washable, would you believe? <laughs> and totally child-proof. 
indestructible. Yeah, and as I say, even adult, but we can have an adult that wants to eat a book. So yes. there you go. I bought some of my little ones of my grandchildren. So absolutely worth a, an investment. Um, $7.95, guys. Oh, wow. Price is right. Yeah, basically every everything in this store is something you're not going to find on Amazon. That's right. And if you're looking to create a little bit of magic in your life through the holiday season, I always just tell my grandchildren think I'm a magician. So I always say, this is a beautiful uh, coloring book of magic. And if you just sort of give it a little bit of a shake, you can add a little bit of color to Whoa. it. Whoa. How did that happen? So anybody can be a magician. Whoa. Oh, you should see that one. Do it again. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So we're going to give it a little bit of a shake. We want... <laughs> I love it. I love we it. just want the blank pages. I'm going to be spending more money. Okay, and now we're going to shake it again. We're going to have some colored pages. <laughs> and if I'm tired of all of that... <gasps> what kind of sorcery is this? I can see why they Hi. shut you down. <laughs> <laughs> awesome totally awesome well folks you, you know where you're doing your gift shopping it's worth the drive to Leduc. and actually just the look of that street there it's 10 times more beautiful than what you're going to see on white avenue right now white ave is absolutely decrepit most of the gift stores are closed um so if you want to uh you know you want to do some real gift shopping just like back in the old days come down to Leduc and get her done um let me just give you a little close-up of uh, this inspector's card here. I'm gonna, I've posted this inspector's phone number. Let's see, focus. I posted this uh, on the, uh, the description for the video. Um, anybody that wants to call in and offer some support for these folks, I would really appreciate it. Karen would really appreciate it. Uh, you can see he's got his email address on there. I will add that to the description when I get home. But if you guys could send this guy an email, better yet, if someone could get me the name of his boss, um, actually, wow, hey, maybe if someone's got Dina Hinshaw's phone number, get me Dina Hinshaw. I wanna hear how she justifies this kind of tyranny. Cause this is over the line, people. It's totally ridiculous. You can't be targeting businesses just because they're mask exempt. It's none of their business why they're mask exempt. David, take it home. What do you got? Well, I'm mask exempt, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> because of a ventilator injury. Everybody knows what a ventilator is? Improper use of ventilators kill people. So that makes me mask exempt. Um, I actually also, carry with me, I'm one of the few people in the world who actually has a letter from their doctor. I won't show you because she'll probably get upset with me for showing her name because she won't give them out anymore. But I actually have a letter from May because I knew what was coming. Um, you cannot discriminate pe against people. Uh, it is illegal. You cannot make lies up on an order and shut down a business and cause damages. Somebody needs to hold these people accountable because if we don't hold them accountable, who will? If we don't hold them accountable now, when? And guess what, guys? They're coming for you next. So let's stop this now. Let's get some sanity back and let's support local businesses because you will rue the day they're gone. We can't all live on Amazon sitting from our couch. We will not survive as a species. So everybody get down here, do your Christmas shopping and support the local people who supported you. Amen. Well, folks, I think that about sums it up. Unless, Karen, you have anything you need to add? No, again, just a huge thank you to everybody. Um, I, I, I'll say one thing, you know, through all of this uh, pandemic, that uh, I have had the immense opportunity to meet the most amazing people. And so in the darkest moments or whatever, I have found the brightest lights. And again, I just want to thank you all so very, very much for, uh, for reaching out. It's been it's been amazing just amazing so thank you very much well thanks for talking to us and, and you know what it's it's karen and david here these guys have been doing all the reaching out and getting in touch with people and then i just get to be the guy that takes all the glory on the camera <laughs> so thank you david and karen dixon thank you and uh, and thank you so much karen for inviting us here today and having the courage to speak out because that's really important too because otherwise i'd have nobody to film so <laughs> well thanks thank you very much and, uh, like i say i look forward to see seeing everybody and welcome you to the coffee shop 
and the gift store. Yeah, I, I think you're going to see a little bump in business. I, we got a lot of friends out there, and uh, hopefully they pop in. And this is a beautiful shop. You've done beautiful things with it. And just like, yeah, I'd be afraid to bring my kids down here. <laughs> it's, you know, it's... The, it, it's an old-fashioned toy store, the way it should be. Back when you could actually touch stuff. Hey, Edmonton Public Library, remember this? Remember this, where I touched everything? <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> this is the Angry Albertan signing off. You all have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your weekend, and we will see you guys. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. I will be live streaming at 8 a.m. tomorrow with Gwillem. What's Gwillem's last name? Owen. Gwillem Owen. The, uh, he was in charge of the Tesco plastic massacre in Wales. So they, in Wales, they made everything uh, non-essential. They had to be closed. You're not allowed to sell it. So they taped over everything. And he went in and he just tore all that tape down. He's facing criminal charges now. So while you're drinking your morning coffee tomorrow. Because he wanted his child to have a winter coat for winter. That was his criminal crime of the century. You know, public enemy number one because he wanted to make sure his child was protected in the winter. Because, but apparently, according to the government of Wales, that's not an essential thing. Just let your child freeze and get COVID. Insane. So tune in tomorrow while you're drinking your coffee. That's going to start hopefully at 8 o'clock, maybe about quarter after 8. Tuesday, we get another show. We've got Krista, the... Uh, Jerry, what's Jerry Dunham. Jer Jerry Dunham? He was killed by Alberta Health Services uh, neglect. You know, during the earlier portion of the lockdown, couldn't get the medical care he needed. Uh, the father of his children is going to be on the program on Tuesday evening. And uh, and if Karen keeps at it here, uh, there's going to be like a podcast every night of the week if I'm not careful. So anyhow, it's a, an exciting week coming up. All right, Angry Albertans, signing off. Share this video, please. And uh, if you can send this inspector uh, an email or a phone call, I would really appreciate it. So would Karen. And uh, we'll see you all again soon.